From a record-setting quarterback at Navy to the unexpected head coach at Liberty University, today we bring you the story of John Cartwright. And I'll sit down with Liberty lacrosse coach Kelly Nangle for an in-depth look into this fast-rising program. That's all ahead. Game On starts right now. It's that time again, time to get your weekly dose of game on. As always, alongside Britton Lynn, I'm Matt Warner. Yeah, we've got a lot to cover today. Baseball season beginning, and I sat down with the Liberty lacrosse coach. But with college basketball coming down the home stretch, we begin with some hoops. Yeah, we certainly do. This past Saturday, the Liberty men's basketball team hosted Presbyterian. The Flames are trying to bounce back from a last second loss in their previous game and also keep themselves in the mix with the top teams in the Big South. Presbyterian, on the other hand, entered on an eight game losing streak and early on it appeared it would be a nine game losing streak. Evan Maxwell rocking the rim in the first couple of minutes, got the crowd to its feet. He would score 11 on five of six shooting. The Flames hit 12 threes in this game with five of those coming from AC Reed. He had a team high 18 as Liberty led up until the midway point of the first half. After that, it would be the Deshaun Murray show. The Presbyterian star going off. He would tie a career high with 28 points to go along with 12 boards. That Herculean effort would carry the Blue Hose to a win. 79-73, LU now 9-7 in conference play. Well, spring training has begun around Major League Baseball, but in the college ranks, the regular season is already underway. For the Liberty Baseball team, their 2016 campaign began in sunny Tampa, Florida, with a three-game series against the University of South Florida. After losing a ninth-inning lead to drop the season opener on Friday night, the Flames bounced back on Saturday. Four LU pitchers would combine to toss a shutout as Liberty took down the Bulls 4 to nothing. The Flames would then drop the rubber game of this series 6-5. But a bright spot on the weekend, however, was the play of freshman DJ Artis. He went 6-for-12 with a home run and four RBIs. On to the Lady Flames, now Liberty softball with a 1-0 shutout over North Texas on Friday. Later that day, the Flames took on their third-ranked opponent of the season and number 21-ranked Baylor. The Flames fell in that game 5-0 and finished out the tournament with a close loss to Northwestern State on Sunday. If you've watched any Liberty softball, you know that Dot Richardson's impact on the Lady Flames in such a short amount of time has really been incredible. After just one season under Coach Richardson, Liberty improved to 18 more wins than the previous season. But as the two-time Olympic gold medalist told us, how she got started in the sport is a miracle in and of itself. When I was a young girl, it became very obvious that I just loved moving and sports, but I never got the chance to play. And let's make it clear, the boys didn't have a problem with me because after school, they'd pick me first in their pickup games. Didn't matter what sport it was, but society said girls cannot play organized sports. I just felt like I was an athlete without a team. And I don't know, it just continued to enjoy what I could. And next thing you know, my big brother asked me to break in his brand new catcher's mitt. As I'm firing this ball, I can still hear the pop of that brand new catcher's mitt. And I'm imagining being a major league baseball pitcher. Next thing you know, this coach comes running off the field. He says, wow, you got a great arm. How would you like to play on my little league team? Yes, my prayers are being answered. I mean, this was it. I'm thinking major league baseball. And then in practically the same breath, he said, well, we're gonna have to cut your hair really short and give you a boy's name. We're gonna call you Bob. And I looked at him as much as I wanted it, trust me. I looked at him and said, sir, thank you, but no thank you. If I have to hide who I am, I just don't feel right about it. So I'm walking over to uh, another field just to watch what's going on and I meet this friend of mine, Sunday Brown. And as we're playing catch, this other guy comes running up and he says, wow, you got a great arm. Do you have a minute to talk to the head coach? Deja vu. Really, how is this happening to me within 30 minutes? Out from the third base dugout came a woman. It wasn't a man. And she was the head coach and she said, have you ever played softball before? And I was like, no, what is it? Oh, it's just like baseball, but the ball's a little bigger. Get on third base and take a few ground balls. Well, as I was fielding these balls, I felt like I belonged. It was amazing. And she called me over and said, how would you like to play on my fast pitch softball team? And I was like, yes. Oh my gosh, my dreams are kind of, ball's a little bigger, but it's like baseball. And then she looked at me and said, how old are you anyway? 
and when I told her I was 10 years old, she almost died. The average age of this fast pitch softball team was 22. So we went and talked to mom and dad and they said yes, that I could play. And that began my career in the sport of softball. The first Pan American Games, I happened to make that team at 17 years of age. We went to San Juan, Puerto Rico, and we won a gold medal. I was still in high school, but I wanted to go to UCLA because UCLA that year had won every women's major sport national championship under the AIAW. So when I was at Western Illinois my first year, I was hoping that I would have been at UCLA, but I wasn't. Well, next thing you know, I get the opportunity to transfer. So I transferred to UCLA. Well, we won the first NCAA championship ever offered to women's athletics when I was at UCLA that year in 1982. And then we can go to the first Olympics ever to host our sport of fast foot softball in 1996 in Atlanta. And I happen to be blessed with being on that team of 15 to represent our nation. I also went and pursued a career as a physician. And you look at how many women have become physicians, one of, you know, not the first, but of a few to get into orthopedic surgery through the years. Then I get approached to run for mayor, county commissioner, to consider running for U.S. Senate for the state of Florida. One night, 1130, I pray, Lord, wherever you want me, just I ask you to make it perfectly clear if it's politics, whatever it is. Nine o'clock the next morning, the athletic director of Liberty University, Jeff Barber, calls me and he says that the softball coach has retired and they're looking for a new coach to come in who has some name recognition. I said, sir, where's Liberty University? Lynchburg, Virginia. We're the largest Christian university in the world. Oh my gosh, my first thought is watch out what you pray for. He said, we want to bring the sport to the next level, which means to be in the top 20 in the nation, Lord willing to win World Series championships over and over again. We want to build a stadium that we want you to design. I said, sir, I'm humbled by this phone call and opportunity, but maybe you don't realize I've never head coached in college softball before. He says, we know that, but we feel the Lord is bringing us to you. You see, I'm at Liberty University coaching softball, not in medicine or in politics. I'm coaching NCAA Division I competitive softball at a university who gets it. That it's not about winning or losing. It's about using the talents, the gifts and opportunities that the Lord has given us to impact the lives in those venues so that they can see His glory. They can see what is happening bigger than just a ball game. We have a staff that is committed uh, to really being the best that we can be to glorify the Lord to impact the lives of not just our players, but all of those who hear about us and who watch us and uh, experience what we are experiencing with them. Dot Richardson, certainly a legend in her sport. Rhett McGiven, certainly a legend in his own mind. Rhett, thanks for joining <laughs> us. Time for Warm, Hot, and Fuego. Top athletic performances in Liberty over the past week. Yep. Perhaps some obscure national holidays mixed in from time to time. Yeah. Who knows? You never know. Rhett, let's begin with Warm. Warm. Swimming and diving under the sea, just you and me, my friend. They've done really well That's here the first lately. Little Mermaid reference, I think we've ever yeah, had. Yeah, probably on the, show. the last, I to be so. honest. That, you know, that movie scared me when I was a kid. The octopus lady yeah. frightened me. I had to, I had to leave the movie actually. <laughs> Kristen Van De Vetter swam a lifetime best, 1649.89 to place third in the 1650 free at the CCSA Championships, where the Flames placed second. Kendall Howe earned her seventh career, or pardon me, seventh career medal there. Third this week, finishing third in the hundred free. Alicia Finnegan. Did well there as well, you know. And I heard you pretty good at the fly, you know, at the 200, 200 fly. You're pretty fly for a white guy, right? Nah, yeah, that's okay. good. I see what you did there. Uh, yeah. All right, moving on from warm to hot. Tori Zavani for women's softball has just been great here lately. Last year, yeah. she led in runs scored, triples, homers, slugging percentage, you know, name it. She yeah. had a walks on base percentage, steals. First lady flame to do that in quite some time since 2012. So in 11 games this year, she has a 324 average, yeah. 11 hits, eight runs, five stolen bases. She does have 10 strikeouts to lead the team, but guess what? She reminds me of Vladdy Guerrero. That's he was right. one of my favorites. Yeah. Just the swinging and everything, you know, he's yeah. batting the nats away. Yeah. Keep it going, Tori. You're doing absolutely fantastic. And 
She has a on base for a pardon me, a fielding percentage of 94%. Only one error on the year in 11 games. So that's pretty And good. they've been playing some tough competition yes, in Alabama, Baylor, some yeah. top 25 teams. Yeah. So they're only going to get better. As oh, they yeah. When on. Big South time comes around, friends, don't no. you worry. They'll be ready. All right. For and sure. we lead up to In Fuego. Yes. Who's your pick for Enfuego this Enfuego. week? Enfuego, Andrew Yasek, this guy. I remember back in 2014, I bet you're going to remember this, okay. against Duke. I remember you're this. You're down, pinch hitter, Andrew Yasek. I'm actually... Home run over the scoreboard. Yeah, I was actually standing bomb. by Jeff Barber at the time, the athletic director here. He said, this kid will hit over the fence. Sure enough, he did. It's wow. A fun little day. Yeah, he called it. So this kid up to his old tricks. Yeah. Ninth inning, down nine to six, gets up, smokes a grand slam, his second homer of the game. Unfortunately, they would still fall in the bottom of the ninth. But Andrew Yasek in the designated hitter position this year. This is a guy that is clutch, and I like clutch. Has as many home runs already this yes. year in the first game yeah. as did all of last year. So yeah. he started out hot. Red, I should mention National Sword Swallowers Day on Saturday. Oh. I knew you would appreciate yes. that. Thank you. Thanks as always. Red, Britton, back over to you. Thanks, guys. Well, just six years ago, the women's lacrosse team became a Division I program. Last year, they managed to make it all the way to the conference championship in only their second season under Coach Kelly Nangle. Now, in year three under Coach Nangle has begun, we sat down to discuss with her the high expectations for this season. Just coming off your best season, 9-11, and 11, you guys broke 24 records last mm -hmm. year. What's the excitement level like in the locker room right now? Um, they're pretty excited. I knew at the end when we finished our season last year that this year was going to be special and I told them, you guys have such an advantage because you're, you've been here now. We were about to go stand in the middle of that field and you're going to watch another team get a trophy. And there's nothing like that feeling. But all that's going to do is put, is add fuel to the fire and like that's all you're going to need to have motivation for the next season. And it, it, it was. I mean, they all, they've all come back like so hungry and they want to be back there and they don't want to ever have that feeling again. So there's just so much more to accomplish and to, there's so many more records to break and there's just so much more potential and the girls are really excited. You know, like every day they're coming out and they have the opportunity to do something that's never been done. Um, and I, I mean, you can't ask for much more as a coach. I mean, that, that it just it motivates them just in itself. It's pretty incredible that this program switched from club to D1 six years ago. Mm -hmm. How difficult has that process been changing the mindset and the culture behind this team? Well, it's really hard. There's a lot of important factors that like the coaching staff has to have to be able to really change the culture. You know, you really have to have, I think, a handful of things that you're really adamant about. Something as simple as a run test. We've always been consistent about if you don't pass the run test, you don't play. My first year, I knew that everyone was going to go home over winter break and do nothing. I just knew it because it was my first year, and they're like, yeah, sure, coach, you know. And we came back, and only seven people passed. And so we practiced with seven people for a week. I was like, you're going to stand on the sideline, and you're going to watch those seven kids get better, the seven kids that put the work in over break. And that was hard. I mean, that put us at a disadvantage because, like, here we are in preseason, not even practicing with our full team. But they knew in that moment that like we were serious about this. So the expectation is you have two run tests, you don't play until you pass them. I'm like, if you can't handle a run test, what are you gonna do when there's two minutes left in the game and the ball's in your stick? I don't want you on the field if you're afraid of a run test. <laughs> so it's been a really big part of, I think, changing the culture. I, we do a lot of outside the box type of things. Like in the fall, every Friday we play a different sport. And I just think it's so funny because I'm like, you guys, you call yourselves athletes, but you don't know how to play like dodgeball. <laughs> like, how do you not understand the rules of kickball? Like, this is, there's a problem here. You know, so it's just, it's funny. And it's good because it kind of, because I'm constantly thinking and not just thinking in the lacrosse box. I'm all over the place, you know, have the girls watch basketball. I'm like, look, it's the same thing. So I think it's helpful and it kind of gives us a little bit of an edge because we do things, obviously I haven't picked up on it yet. We do things a little bit differently than everybody else, but I like it. Seems like making this fun for the girls is pretty important to you too. Oh yeah, because this is not, there are times of this that are not fun. And I tell them all the time, I'm like, if you're not enjoying this, then you shouldn't be doing it. Like it's, you have to want to be here. It's not fun to come out and do the same exact thing every day and, do, and not see any improvement or have any kind of feeling like, oh, I'm excited. Like, I don't know what we're gonna do today. So I try to always keep them on their toes. <laughs> Freshman goalie, Katherine Woodrick, mm -hmm. apparently she was a top recruit out of high school. What mm -hmm. do you expect from her this season? The freshman in their first game is always, you know, a roll of the dice because you're like, okay, they're prepared, but you can only prepare so much. Like, you're not, you haven't played in an actual game yet. Mm -hmm. And she came out and, I mean, she was completely confident, totally calm. 
there's no limit for her. I mean, she's going to be phenomenal. The whole defense is also back. Mm -hmm. so they were there in that tough game, that tough mm -hmm. loss to the championship. So they got mm -hmm. that extra edge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, our, that's, that's probably going to be our biggest highlight, even though I think there's going to be a lot of other highlights. But uh, our, our defensive end is going to be extremely solid. And I talk about this all the time, too. We play a really tough schedule. And I just that's just my philosophy, because in my mind, you don't get better by playing bad teams. I like for us to play a really tough schedule going into our conference play so that by the time we get into it, we're prepared, you know. I told the girls, I'm like, you know, we had a tough game on Saturday, but now we had all week, like we've exposed our weaknesses because we played a good team. So we have all week to get better and to improve. And we'll continue to do that all season because we're constantly playing good teams. And the Lady Flames coming off their first home game of the season against VCU later this week. They'll be taking on Navy in Annapolis, Maryland. 50 years ago, he was Navy's star quarterback, even breaking Heisman Trophy winner Roger Staubach school records. But it was coaching for the Liberty football team that prepared John Cartwright for his life calling. That story plus Rhett McGibbon rejoins us with the wrap. Game on returns after this. There's a reason why Liberty University is one of the most searched for universities in the nation. Corporations trust us to effectively train their employees. Military members choose to take us around the world. And parents prefer us to help change their families' lives. So, if millions of people have searched for us in the past few years, why haven't you? At Liberty University, we believe in providing a world-class education with a solid Christian foundation to men and women across the globe. We want our students to be equipped with the values, knowledge, and skills essential for success in every aspect of life. We offer a variety of online degree programs, including criminal justice, business, and aeronautics. Designed with flexibility in mind, these programs can help you achieve your educational dreams on your own terms. At Liberty University, our belief in training champions for Christ isn't restricted to our campus in Virginia. In fact, our online programs allow students around the world to access the same quality education as if they studied on our residential campus. After all, we firmly believe that students should be able to fit study time around family, work, or military responsibilities. The path to freedom begins at Liberty. Welcome back to the show. John Cartwright's football playing career was marked by records and wins. His football coaching career, however, would be tied to tragedy. And yet through it all, God was preparing Cartwright for a greater vocation, one that has now become his passion for more than 30 years. The 1967 season is underway. The midshipmen give an early indication they'll be an exciting club to watch. On September 22nd, Penn State visits Annapolis. One minute to go, Cartwright passing from the 16 to Taylor. Touchdown. 
Taylor's 10th reception breaks the Academy single game record. The dramatic 78 yard charge in the pressure packed final seconds gives Navy a 23 22 upset victory over Penn State. Navy's star quarterback that year, John Cartwright, often thinks back on those thrilling times. Probably the most exciting year was my senior year when I um, started and we had wins against Penn State. Joe Paterno was the uh, head coach then. We beat uh, Syracuse that year. We beat Michigan. We played Michigan out there in the big house and beat them. Pittsburgh. And then uh, the most important win of all, of course, was the Army-Navy win that we had that year. A three sports star in high school, this future Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Famer decided to attend the Naval Academy, where he had the chance to succeed a legend at the quarterback position. Roger Stahlbeck was winning the Heisman Trophy right about that time, and uh, that was, of course, a very attractive recruitment tool for the Naval Academy, too. The first game we played, we, we uh, lost to Syracuse. They had some great players. Larry Zonka was on the team. Floyd Little was a running back for that team. John Cartwright has been compared favorably with Navy's legendary quarterback, Roger Staubach. Like Staubach, Cartwright inspires his team with his passing and running ability. We lost that game, but that was when I threw my first touchdown pass. And then I became the starter after that. Young Mr. Cartwright delivers to Rob Taylor. John would go on to break 13 of Staubach's school records before closing out his career with the 1914 victory over Army in the 68th Service Academy Classic. It was a game played in front of 102,000 fans. After a tour of duty overseas, Cartwright would then shift into a coaching role, becoming an assistant at Liberty Baptist College under Lee Rock Royer. He was the kind of man who made you feel like you were his best friend. And uh, it didn't matter who it was, when you walked away from Rock Royer, you, you knew you had a friend and you really felt like he was your best friend. He was the one who got the program started at Liberty and uh, put Jesus Christ right in the center of everything that we did. Well, we uh, finished the season probably early November. It was a short season. It was, everything was last minute for that season when Rock came. And so by Thanksgiving, we were completed and I got a call that, that Thanksgiving that Rock had died in a, a plane crash. And uh, so it was a great, great loss for all of us. Thank you, Lord, for Rock and that he's with you. And we just ask you, right now that by the power of Jesus Christ, the victorious Savior that you give to us, that which you gave Rock, Lord, a victorious Christian life, a champion for you. John would take over as head coach in 1974. Over the next three years, he led the program to its first winning season and oversaw changes that led to new traditions. It's when we made the transition from uh, green and gold to uh, red, white, and blue, uh, we didn't have the money to go out and buy all those new helmets, so our coaching staff uh, got our spray paint cans out and we spray painted all the helmets. And what we didn't count on, though, was we were gonna be banging heads with other people, and the first game, we had those blue helmets with gold shining through after, uh, <laughs> after some hits, and. I know those other teams had blue on their helmets, you know, when the game was over. After four years at Liberty, John would return to Philadelphia to start a new church, fulfilling a dream that has become the passion for the rest of his life. I never realized what God was doing in preparing me to become a pastor, but I really was the pastor for 40 or 50. Sometimes we had 60 players on that team, the heartbeat that we had in Lynchburg just carried me right over to being a pastor of a church. For nearly 40 years, John and his wife Thelma have built a legacy of serving others based upon the lessons he learned playing and coaching the great game of football. Young Mr. Cartwright delivers to Rob Taylor on a post pattern. Navy, touchdown. Navy. 
holds an upset. And the Navy gun barks here in Philadelphia. 19 to 14. Thanks to our Russ Martin for producing that piece. Now to get you all caught up on all the happenings around Liberty's Club sports programs, here's Rhett with the wrap. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done the wrap, so let's get caught up with men's Division I hockey. Unfortunately, it's been a bit of a tough year for the Flames, but with the number one team in the nation showing up in Lynchburg, the Flames save some of their best hockey for last. A Kyle Crane turnover. There's Jeremy Johnson. He puts it in the back of the net, one nothing. Then Austin, you know, look at that backhand toe drag, a beautiful top shelf. Oh, that was just gorgeous. I could look at it for days. But then momentum changed. Kyle Crane laying a thunderous hit along the boards. Then Danny Logan, one of my absolute favorites. It sends it down low. Harris able to put it in on the backhand. And then the kid line got going. Lamaru finds Masters, who throws it out in front. Raymond Wilson puts it between the legs, and it's a 2-2 hockey game. This game would eventually go to overtime. 3-3 would be the score, where poor Stephen Ballou, his senior game, blows a tire. And then Jeremy Johnson walks out right in front, and he wins it 4-3. Great game, though, for the Flames. Men's lacrosse has gotten going. They played a couple of top 15 teams in the MCLA. They would trade a Boston College with one and a half minutes left. Unfortunately, they get two slashing penalties, and that would be the game for them. They lose 12 to 11, and then they play Georgia Tech, another great team in the MCLA, dropping that one 15 to 7. Lombardozzi had four goals in the game. The goaltender, Matt Nichols, played very well, so lacrosse team has a little bit of work to do, but trust me, they are going to be there in the end, my friends. Guys, back over to you. Thank you, Rhett. More still to come on this edition of Game On. Including our call of the week. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. Being a military wife and having three children, also being full-time faculty at a local college, I needed something that would allow me to pursue myself professionally, advance my career, but flexible enough that I could still be wife and mom and professor. Liberty University Online made me feel like I had a whole team behind me, rooting me on. No matter when I needed to do my studies, it was very convenient because there was always someone there to help me. You're going to have professors who will email you scripture verses, who are there to pray with you, who are there to encourage you and to help you each step of the way. It combined the best of both worlds. You had very much a challenge academically, as well as that grounding of true biblical worldview. And that is why Liberty University makes champions for Christ. It was fantastic. We're about out of time today. As always, if you'd like to catch up on past episodes or rewatch some of your favorite stories, head over to our website, GameOnLU.com. Yeah, and feel free to connect with us on social media as well. We'd love to hear from you. Before we go, we leave you with our call of the week. The voice of the Flames, Alan York, describes a big bucket in the Flames contest with Radford. We hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you right back here next time. Now finds Dawson. John crosses over down the lane, hangs and shoots and scores on the right block. John Dawson got 22, and the Flames up by two with one minute left. A big time play by John Dawson.